Good morning. Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I sure appreciate you stopping by. If this is your first visit, I'd appreciate you considering clicking on that subscribe button, especially if you find this little video to be of value and of interest. Today, we're going to talk about the top 10 most crucial items for you to have in your RV. This is the kind of stuff that you want to spend your money on first, rather than running out and buying rugs lights little signs rug mat mats foo foo stuff it, this this is the nuts and bolts these are the items that you must have to protect your investment and to actually be able to take advantage of your investment your new rv or your RV, old rv new to you rv and all of these items i have personally used I'm, and I have personally paid for. I purchased all of these items for my own use. If you choose to purchase them, if you want to learn more about these various products that we're going to talk about, in the description down below is a link to my Amazon influencer page. Channel earns a little bit of extra pennies for every item you purchase. You don't spend an extra dime. I'll also include individual links for each one of these items. In the event that you don't want to go shopping on the, the Dude RV Amazon page, there'll be a link in the description for you to just click and you're done. All right, let's get to it. So we're going to start at number 10 and go all the way to number one. The number one most important thing to have in your RV slash motor home. All right, number 10 on our list. A hose water filter. And I think you need to have a hose water filter because typically tap water is safe to drink in most cases. Now, there will be times these inexpensive hose in filters, they filter down to 20 microns and they're going to catch most of your particulates. It goes through a carbon filtration, so it, it pulls out a lot of contaminants. You never know what's in your water. Many RVs now have onboard water filters, but those cartridges are going to cost you more than a hose filter. These are good for 20,000 gallons. I go through two a year. $20 or $10 each. This is number 10 on your list of must-have items for your RV. Number nine, counting down. Number nine, you want to be able to use the, the, I mean, you're buying an RV to have the electricity. You may or may not have an onboard generator. You may or may not carry a generator with you, but there will be times when you pull into a campsite or someone's driveway where you need to plug your RV in. Therefore, you need to be prepared to plug in to whatever power is available. So number nine are adapters, pigtails. Sometimes you'll roll into a campground that only has 50 amp, but your RV's a 30 amp. You need to be able to adapt your 50 amp RV to plug into a 15 amp. So this is a great little tool right here. It goes right into the side of your RV so you don't have to pull out that big heavy cord and it plugs into the, the 15 amp circuit. I ended up needing this uh, when we were having the RV service. They had a, an RV campground, but it was all 50 amp. And so I had to go out and find a pigtail that would adapt 50 to 30. Cause I'm in Texas and I needed to run the air conditioner. Sometimes you'll pull into a campsite that only has 30 amp, but you're a 50 amp coach. So you need to go from 30 to 50. So having a selection of adapters with you in your RV is crucial. You never know where you're gonna need to pick up power. Number eight. Number eight are top 10 most crucial items to have on your RV at all times. Before I buy anything else, this is the gear that I invest in. You have your RV to go places. It has wheels. And when we went to Big Bend, we learned the hard way. If you pick up a nail in your tire, it can be a long time before someone can come and help rescue you. So therefore you need to be prepared to rescue yourself by carrying with you some form of air compressor. Now in the pickup, I always carry two, 
when I'm pulling the pickup because I always carry this bad boy in the pickup. Sometimes I need to inflate my scooter tires. Sometimes I need to inflate my truck tires. This will get it done. This pump goes up to what 100 and says 150 psi. I, 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 I had a low tire on Miss V at one point. I hooked this up and it just really wasn't enough to get, I mean, that, it ran for 20 minutes and it only raised the pressure a little bit because Miss V runs, her, her tire pressure is 80 pounds. Uh, some, tr some of your bigger RVs, we've got 100 PSI. So that little compressor just really wasn't enough. And so I stepped up and bought, invested in and I, I can't speak highly enough of this. This is the Vier setup. This is, this bad boy will get it done. It's a full kit. It comes with everything you need. It's got a, it clamps onto your battery because it pulls a lot of amperage. And it will inflate up to like 200 PSI. And it'll get it done in a hurry. All right, so the Vi Air, the, an air compressor of some kind. Just be prepared. If you've got a, a, you know, if you have a generator, you've got 110 power. So you may not need to invest in the Vi Air. Just buy yourself a small air compressor that operates off of 110, provided you have a generator. Make sure you got some air. You don't want to be stranded. Number seven on our top 10 list of must have items for your RV. Gotta have this before you go anywhere. You need to have some basic tools. It doesn't have to be much, but you need to have some basic tools because if you, you may not be able to use them. But if you have the tools and someone comes along and you've got a problem, there will be someone that will come along and say, hey, man, you need some help. Oh, if, absolutely. If we only had some tools, well, you can cover it yourself by having some tools. Screwdriver, pliers, buy a little, little kit that's got some sockets, both, both styles, metric and standard. I personally always carry plugs for the tire. And of course, I always carry my big heavy duty air gauge so that I can make sure my tire pressure is correct. Of course, maybe that should have gone with the compressor, but no, because this, this is just a daily thing. Anytime you're gonna roll, you need to check your tire pressure. So basic tools, basic tools. That'd be 10, 9, 8, 7. So number 7 on our list was basic tools. You gotta have your basic tools. Number 6. Number 6 on our list of the top 10 most important things to have in your motorhome, in your RV. It's in this box right here. Now, your RV most likely is self-contained. Most of them are, and self, what's self-contained, in case you don't know, a self-contained RV has an onboard water system, both fresh and waste. It has a 12-volt power system to operate your basic things, your refrigerator, your lights, uh, and some way to cook. A self-contained RV does not have a generator nor does it have air conditioners. Those are considered to be extras in the RV vernacular. All right, so I digress. Number six on our list of top, top 10 most important things to have in your RV, you need to be able to dump your tanks. Some people call it the stinky slinky. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of those stinky slinky ones. This is a Rhino. I really like the Rhino because in, in my opinion, it's a little more sanitary because once you're done and you've washed it out, you can put caps on it. And it fits in, into most places pretty easily. Although the, the coupling end sometimes may not fit into the bumper or the pipe 
uh, where you're supposed to store your your sewer hose but in most cases it will I typically travel with at least two of these simply because I've been to places where you know the power pedestal and the water connections here and the sewer uh, was like uh, Caddo Lake State Park we ha I had to have both of my sewer hoses to get into the sewer system so number si number six on our list was a sewer hose make sure you have a sewer hose and, th and that you know how to use it I've seen people that don't know how to use their sewer hose and it makes it a mess for everybody else and that segues right into the next most important thing to have on our RV. And I cannot tell you how many times I have encountered people that had everything else, but they didn't have this. So number five on our list of most important things to have, gloves. Good, good nitrile gloves. Now these are actually Astro Grip, and they're bright orange, so it's hard to lose them. Uh, best of all, they have, they come in multiple sizes, so I don't have to fight to get them on my hands. They're, I've never had one of these orange nitrile gloves fail in the middle of doing the dirty deed. Uh, these come in handy for other things too, like putting stink bait on your hook, cleaning fish, working with jalapeno peppers, so many uses for this great package so number five on our list is gloves that brings us to number four number four on our list now we're getting down to the the, the nitty-gritty here number four most important are blocks blocks and chocks good heavy-duty chocks big blocks what's the importance of the block so many campsites are not level <laughs> and and level is crucial for a, a a whole lot of reasons one it's just more comfortable to be in your RV number two uh, if you've got a propane fired refrigerator an evaporative refrigerator that sucker needs to be level otherwise the flame is is not in the right place and it can cause damage to your evaporative refrigerator and it doesn't work as well for us in the big super in the super C with the super slide the single full wall slide it's crucial to be as close to level as possible when we open that slide and it is very recommended that all four wheels remain in contact with the ground now yes I have an automatic leveling system I have been in sites where it was not possible for me to get level no matter how hard I tried no matter what I tried no matter how many blocks I've had but there have been a whole lot of times where I was in a site that was kilted, tilted, slightly off. And the leveling system needed just a little help. So I carry what you've seen in the blocks and chocks category. Uh, if you've got a dually, you want to make sure both your tires are supported. Don't don't put all the weight of that dually rear end on one tire. Uh, that can do do some that can do some serious damage. So you need big wide blocks for your rear end. Uh, you might there are other options for blocking. You can use a tri leveler. A lot of people use those. Uh, I find this to be a little more versatile because. You never know what you're going to encounter. And my objective is to get the RV closer to level so that the automatic leveling system can do its job. Uh, m there have been many a time where I've used blocks to get the to, to build up under those jacks so those jacks are able to do what they need to do. So it's always good to have blocks and chocks. That's why it's number number four on our list of most important things to have in the RV. Number three, the number three most important item to have in your RV is a water hose. 
and not just any water hose. You want to take a shower, you want to wash your dishes, you want to get a drink, you and you're in the campground, you're going to connect to the city water supply, the public water supply. You got to be able to get it from the, the spigot to the RV. Even if you're going to be operating off your onboard tank, you still got to be able to get it from the spigot to the RV. And that requires a water hose. But you don't want to use just any old water hose. You don't want to go grab a, a water hose for the garden. Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it'll contaminate the water. Minor detail that. All of the pollutants that'll go into your water. Most important, it'll make your water taste really bad and smell funky. Have you ever smelled water coming out of a water hose that's been laying out in the sun? I've, I've actually made the mistake of filling my fresh water tank with one of those hoses. Never again. So therefore, you want to make sure you get a fresh water, a drinking water hose. Now this is the Aquafresh. It's a new one for me. Typically you see them, they're white with a blue stripe. Uh, and there's a couple of other hoses on the market. Just make sure you get the right one for the job. We're going to check out the Aquafresh. I like this because it's 35 feet. I have had situations where the water was 30 to 40 feet away. And that's typically in a Corps of Engineer campground. So I always carry about, uh, I've got 50 feet of this type of hose, and then I've got another 150 of a flexible hose that is safe to drink from. I carry a lot of water. You never know. Got to be prepared. All right, so that's the, the third most important thing to have in our top 10 countdown. We're heading to number one. The number two most important thing to have in your RV. You're connecting your RV to a, a, a public water supply. You don't know what the pressure coming out of that faucet is going to be. I've seen it from an over 100 PSI. I've seen it as low as 2 PSI. You never know. And if you connect... Let's say you connect to a water hose or a, a public water supply and they're running at 150 PSI. As soon as you open that, you're going to be blowing lines in your RV. <laughs> you don't want that. Trust me. Your RV is not designed to be flooded. So you want to be able to regulate that pressure. Most times when you buy an RV, the dealer is going to give you a little, a little pressure regulator. And these typically are rated between 30 and 40 PSI. They don't give you a very good shower, but they protect your RV. You can step it up and go to the next level, which will tell you whether it's safe or not. It's got a green zone. Most of the, the, most of the state parks that I've been in, we were always in the green. With newer RVs, we're seeing a trend where most of your RV manufacturers are doing away with the tank water heater and going to the InstaHeat water heater, the Girards and the Truma water heaters. They require a minimum of 50 PSI water pressure. So if you have one of these or one of these that's somewhere between 30 and 40 psi and you hook up to that public supply your water heater's not going to work properly and you're going to think that there's something wrong with it you have the ability to correct that and that is to buy something like this which is an adjustable pressure regulator and this this is a nice one it's an oil filled gauge so you want to make sure you don't drop it or leave it at the campsite but this allows you to turn this knob and adjust that pressure cost a little more than this but if you have an insta heat water heating system you're really going to want to invest in something like this so that's number two on our top 10 list of most important things regulate your water pressure number one the number one investment that I always make on every RV, first and foremost, the first thing I do is number, I'm going to protect my investment. Just like you don't know what the water pressure is going to be, 
you have no idea whether or not your power pedestal is set up correctly. So the number one thing that you need to have is some type of surge suppressor. Your RV may already be equipped with a surge suppressor, and that's great if there's a surge. Now, when a home inspector is, is inspecting your home, if you're buying a home, he's going to go through and he's going to test every plug in the house with this little device. And the, the light code will tell him whether or not that plug is wired correctly. Well, that heart won't tell you what a 50 amp plug is, whether that's wired correctly or a 30 amp for that matter. Progressive Industries has a surge suppressor with this built into it. So when we plug this into the power pedestal, it lights up and gives me a green and a blue light, which means I'm safe to plug my RV in. 50 and 30 amps. That way you know when you're plugging your RV in, it is going to be safe. Even if you get a surge. Now the onboard surge suppressor is going to cost you more than this. If you got an extended warranty, <laughs> you got to pay the deductible, which is $100 to $200. If you had this, you wouldn't have had the onboard surge suppressor go out. Good investment. I've been using this for years and it has saved us. When we pulled into Caddo Lake State Park, state parks, I've never had an issue, but I plugged this in and it gave me two red icons. Said that it was there was an open neutral and the ground was not right. I argued with the park maintenance guy. It's a dude. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not plugging in. So I really believe that this has saved us. That is why it's the number one on my list number one most important thing is a good surge suppressor that will tell you whether or not that pedestal is safe for you to plug your RV in. So there you have it. Dude RVs, top 10 most important items to have in the RV. Whether you're a new RVer or not, you need these things, in my personal opinion. All right, that brings us to the end of our little video. If this has been helpful and informative, I'd appreciate you clicking on that thumbs up and blasting me out across your social media. If this is your first visit, thank you for stopping by. I hope you consider clicking on the subscribe button. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you. I'm so deeply honored. And to you, my patrons, y'all rock. All right. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>